We are going to do fundamental problem 4, 42 in this quick video. Uh, remember guys, with regards to the reduction of a simple distributed load. Remember the basic idea is we have a distributed load like that. Okay, it's like a, a pressure in, in over a surface, and then it's a it's a force per meter, right? So this was given in the textbook by W X Newton per meter. Okay, and this is um, this is a kind of an, an equation. It's a function of x. So as we move along our beam, the distributed the the distribution changes, and the force essentially the force uh, per unit length changes. Okay, so what are we trying to do here? We're trying to reduce this to if there's there's our beam, right? There's there's the original beam. There's our there's the same beam. We're trying to reduce this to a single force acting at a certain distance from some arbitrary point. Okay, so just remember we can measure this this distance from any point in the universe. Okay, we can say how far is it from that point? How far is this FR measured from that point? How far is it measured from that point? How far is it measured from any point, right? The, po <clears throat> the point is that it will end up at, at exactly the same spot on the beam, okay? Because, because, okay, this is what I've actually forgotten to mention in the previous videos, which is crucial, okay? And I do apologize for that. Um, that this positioning of this of this uh, resultant force is always in the centroid okay it always passes through the centroid of this area that is very key so this equation that we use x right to determine the positioning which is equal to what is it it's equal to x da over da right this is this equation essentially tells us um, the position of the, the the centroid. Centroid is in in geometric terms, it's the center of area. Okay, so we will do a lot more regarding this um, this matter of the centroid, center of gravity, center of um, yeah, centroid, those kinds of things in chapter nine. Okay, but this position x causes the FR to pass through the centroid. So that is that is very key, centroid, okay? Read up, check it out, look at Wikipedia, find out as much as you can. Very simple concept, okay? So let's look at, um, quickly, let's look at F442. Okay, I know the solution is in the back, but I just chose this because it's one of the few ones that doesn't have a... Um, a conventional shape like a triangle or a square okay um, this has this is slightly more tricky but not really okay so here we have our distributed load 2.5 x cubed and the maximum value of that loading is 160 newton per meter determine the resultant force and specify where it acts on the beam measured from a okay so Let's try and put this down here. So there's our beam. There's our distributed load. So that's W is 2.5x cubed. Okay. And this maximum value is 160 Newton per meter. So remember, guys, uh, we're trying to do two things. We're trying to get our FR, our resultant force, number one. And number two, we need to find where it acts on the beam. And that is it always acts through the centroid always acts through the centroid of this area, okay? So how do we determine FR? It is simply the area under the curve, the integral of dA, okay? And we know that that is equal to Wx dx, which equals 2.5x cubed times dx. And what we also notice is that this length is 4, 4 meters, right? So it's between 0 and 4. 
So we've got, let's integrate that 2.5x to the 4 over 4 between 0 and 4. And what do we get here? I think this is 160, if I'm not mistaken. And that's Newton. So your resultant force is 160 Newton. So the point is that this, if this distributed load has the same effect as applying 160 Newton, but now we need to determine where along that beam is. So we need to determine X, and we know that X, this force, always acts through the centroid, right? The centroid, the center of area, okay? So um, let's just get a new page here. Okay, so we know that we know now that uh, the integral of dA, right? Fr is the integral of dA, and that it was equal to 160 Newton. Okay, we just calculated that. Now, x bar is equal to x dA over dA, which is then equal to x, and then dA we know is wx dx over dA. But we've already calculated this to be 160 Newton, okay? So let's just look at the top. We've got x times 2.5x cubed dx. And at the bottom, we've simply got 160, okay? And then units are Newton there, all right? So we can bring that 2.5 out. And we have 2. Point, uh, sorry, we have x to the 4 dx. That's over 160. And I have no idea what the solution is. Um, but this, we've still got this 2.5 over 160. This then becomes x to the 5 over 5, if I'm not mistaken. Again, it's between 0 and 4. And so x to the 5, 4 to the power of 5 equals divided by 5 times 2.5 divided by 160 gives us 3.2 meters. Okay? Can you see that? No, you can't. Sorry, my studio is not super high tech, but hopefully it's helping. So now that x, x bar is 3.2 meters. So if we replace that distributed load, we're going to so this length is 4, this length is 4, and I just, I just want to ask you, if, if, that is, if that is our distributed load, where do you think, what's your gut feeling regarding where the force should act? We've calculated the resultant force to be 160 Newton, but am I right to say that you would think that it should act this side, right? Because the center of area essentially means that we have the same amount of area on that side if that's the centroid, right? If the centroid is there, that the center of area, C, right? Then our gut feeling tells us that this essentially the same amount of area on that side should, that the area on that side should equal the area on this side, right? So this is what we get. X equals 3.2. So the centroid acts at 3.2 meters from this left hand side and that kind of that kind of tells us yeah we're, we're kind of spot on okay so check your gut feeling all right um, so that's the answer fr is 160 and it acts at 3.2 meters from this point a it says in the textbook okay cheers